Um, now, to the idea of causation, what, <laughs> if you get a couple of analytic philosophers debating the precise meaning of causation, you have a lot of fun, or you fall asleep. Um, you realize that there is, there is no consensus about what it actually is. Um, causation, um, if I define it as simply as I can in a way that is not um, deniable, causation is a distilled pattern of behavior in nature. Uh, we know that when certain things happen together and one precedes the other, we give a name to that and that's causation. Um, but there may be nothing more to causation beyond that. There may be nothing metaphysically distinct about causation. It may be just a recognition of a certain consistency uh, in an evolving pattern in nature. If you look at a, um, the word escapes me now, if you look at a fractal, uh, you will recognize that different parts of the fractal uh, occur together and one occurs after the other. We would be tempted to call that causation, but it's not. Uh, it's, it, it, one part of the fractal is not causing another part of the fractal. They are both being caused by something else and just that you find a correlation between them. Another example from Alan Watts. Um, he has a following thought experiment. Imagine that you're sitting on the ground in front of a fence, um, but there is a little slit on the fence. Two panels are not completely close together, there's a slit. And um, pretend that you don't know what a dog is. And then the dog runs on the other side of the fence and then you see the nose through the slit, then you see the body of the dog through the slit, then you see the tip of the tail through the slit. And every time you look, first you see the nose and then you see the tip of the tail. Every time it's consistent. Uh, if we are that person, we would say, well, the nose causes the tail because one happens consistently after the other. You never find the tail without the nose first. So the nose causes the tail. But, but once you realize what's really going on, you realize that causation is just a sort of a, a local misunderstanding. What you have is a pattern, a dog. It, you just so happen to be seeing only a little part of that pattern at the time. Um, and it's totally intertwined with the concept of time. Causation and time go together. If time is not there, <laughs> then there's no causation. Um, so why am I saying this? Because I, I want to get you away from this notion of causation and think in terms of patterns. Um, I think the only thing that's going on is universal consciousness and it has patterns of excitation. We do not apprehend those patterns as a whole. We never see the whole dog. We only see parts of that pattern, those, those patterns of excitation. So we, we are in the position of that person sitting behind the fence, thinking that the nose causes the tail. But no, it's just an evolution of a pattern. Um, why am I saying that? Um, you also brought in something else in your question, which was free will. I'm trying to, okay, let, I have to now weave that into the, my, my story about causation. I'm a compatibilist. I think um, at the level of universal consciousness, to talk of free will is to talk of necessity. And I'll tell you why. What is our intuition about what free will means? It's the following. I am free to choose, free to will. If I can choose independently or despite of forces that are beyond me, if I am the agency of choice and other forces do not overwhelm my choice, then I have free will. That's what it means. Now, notice that this is fundamentally dependent on this dichotomy of what I am and what is outside me, what I am not. I have free will if my choices are determined by what I am and not by forces that are beyond me, outside me forces that are not me, agencies that are not me. So the very intuition of free will depends on this dichotomy of uh, me and you, or me and uh, uh, this and that. At the level of universal consciousness, there is no such dichotomy. Universal consciousness is all there is. There's nothing else going on. It is what is. 
So to even talk of free will at the level of the ultimate cosmic subject makes no sense. It's a conceptual error. Uh, consciousness, universal consciousness, wills what it wills because it is what it is. So I can give it a deterministic spin. Listen, universal consciousness has no free will because it can only will what it needs to will based on what it is. It cannot will anything other than what it wills because its will is determined by what it is. I can also give it a free will spin. Just listen, I'll be saying the same thing in different words. Universal consciousness has free will because all of its choices are determined by it, not by any external force, since it's all there is. You see, if you think at that level, the entire uh, talk of free will sort of dissipates. Uh, there is only universal consciousness. It does what it does because it is what it is. It has free will in the sense that what it does only depends on itself. It's not determined by anything outside of itself because there is no such a thing. There is only it. But it is determined in the sense that uh, what it wills is a function of what it is and it cannot be something else. You cannot choose to be something else. You are the ultimate. You are what there is. So and that's what you are. And what you will is a function of what you are. From that perspective, it is deterministic. So what I'm trying to lead you to realize is that determinism and free will at the level of the universal subject, it boils down to, and now I'm back, patterns of excitation of universal consciousness. Those patterns are what they are because universal consciousness is what it is. If you take a guitar string of a certain size with a certain inherent tension and you pluck it, it will play a note that is a function of what it is. It will not play another note because it, it is not another guitar string. It is that guitar string. Universal consciousness, consciousness is what it is. Therefore, its patterns of vibration are a function of what it is and, such, and as such are determined. They are also free because they are not determined by anything else other than universal consciousness. And causation is just a local restricted view of those unfolding patterns of excitation. So uh, I, I came to the end. I'm not sure I convinced you that, uh, uh, that this is just a conceptual game, um, that we have to see through this as opposed to answering it. So if you enjoy these discussions and you want to join us, discuss these with Bernardo Kastrup and quite an amazing community of meditators, mystics, philosophers, scientists, and simply ordinary people who are very curious about reality. You can find us in the links below or at adventuresinawareness.com. You can also hugely support this channel by hitting like, subscribing, and sharing your thoughts, questions, and reflections in the comments section below.